Hello and welcome into the next verse. My name is George and if this is your first time here uh, and, or you've been here before but haven't subscribed yet, please do so along with hitting the thumbs up button and dropping your comments. Uh, definitely love hearing the comments. I love it. Um, just to uh, let you guys know, um, had some bad news. Uh, so, uh, there's been a, uh, a death in my family and um, so uh, it may not be my normal jovial self uh or or whatever uh uh amped up uh self uh today but uh, i didn't do the uh post game uh recap of the uh raptors game the other day uh, i wasn't able to do it because uh, of scheduling um also because i was at a different memorial so a lot of uh a lot of sad things uh recently and uh but um no, I felt like, I felt like, uh, I mean, I was already prepared to do this, uh, so I'm going to jump in and do it, and uh, it's, uh, it was actually a, a really great result uh, for the Knicks, uh, kind of had a feeling that they weren't going to go into a prolonged, well, four games in a row losing is, is a pretty sizable losing streak, but I had a feeling they were going to put an end to it soon, um, despite what the prevailing mood is out there amongst the fans and uh, the media and the pundits and everything uh and you know and my own issues with Thibs uh, and his coaching and uh with Leon and the way he's constructed this team for Thibs uh all that aside at the end of the day the players themselves the Knicks have some good players and over time, you know, eventually good players, especially if they stick together, which this team seems to do, uh, even when uh, in the previous game we saw there was an argument between uh, Randall and Fournier, that's, those are healthy. Those are healthy sometimes. Uh, it's, you, you, know, you, you work stuff out. Because uh, it's better than the, op than, than the opposite, which is never discuss anything, never have a conflict, and then you don't ever grow. You don't ever get anywhere. And um, so the tonight's game was a, 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 a tremendous growing opportunity for iHeart, who even though Randall was the big superstar of this game, fantastic game for him, and Emmanuel quickly came back uh, and had an excellent game. I mean, the, the, when he hit the court, the team completely changed once again. And uh, Brunson struggled on a night like this. Uh, it's really nice to see the whole team come together to pull off this win. This was definitely the type of game the Knicks would have lost in the past. We, I mean, they have. They've already, they've already lost games like this uh, recently, and it's been devastating for us as a fan base. Uh, Knicks pulled it out. They held down, held uh, held on to this win, 105-103, and by held on. They really did. They were actually down at one point and came and took this lead. And it, I was, I was nervous. I was, it was, it was a major sweat, but there was something about the demeanor of the players themselves throughout the whole game that felt like if they just got it close enough that they were not going to let this one slip away this time. Or they were able, they were able to get a, a big enough lead. They weren't going to let this one slip away. And that's how it turned out. But let me tell you, this guy right here, I think he had 17 points in the first quarter, I think. Eight three-pointers. He made eight three-pointers. Outstanding. When he's hitting that three-point shot, he when he's hitting that three-point shot and... And, and making assists like this, four. He only got four tonight. He probably could have had a few more. Uh, not necessarily his fault. It's just uh, some buckets didn't fall, even though the Knicks shot very, very well tonight. Uh, remember, this was the game against Donovan Mitchell. You know, he's back in the garden. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, emotions when it comes to uh, Spida and the Knicks. And this man stepped up, 13 boards, big Big rebounds, 36 big, big points. And he hit a three-pointer at one point to cl oh, towards the end of the fourth quarter. I mean, I mean all, all of his threes were big. <laughs> I mean, let's just be frank. They were all really big. And I, I just, I, I 
even though I have definitely had issues with Randall in the past, uh, especially last season, mostly, and the beginning part of this season, the first 15 games or so, he's turned it around so much. Uh, when he's hitting the three-point shot, he is one of the most lethal offensive players on the court. I mean, because he drives, he's a beast, he rebounds, uh, and and then he can hit the outside shot like that. That's a very devastating combination of offensive skills that he has. And then in, on the defensive end, he stepped it up recently. Oh, well, tonight, actually. Not necessarily recently, but tonight. Because the Knicks have been struggling recently. Uh, before the... I guess I was, oh, the previous uh, uh, Raptors game, uh, all the way from the beginning of the season through January 17th. So uh, the first three seasons, uh, the first three <laughs> months of this game, of the season, Jesus, uh, my brain is a little rattled, but I have the notes here. The first three months of this season, the Knicks defensive rating, they were 11th overall. 11th, or almost a top 10 defense. Uh, they... Their defensive rating was 111.9, and their offensive rating was 114.6, which was ninth best in the entire NBA. That's for, you know, 46 games. That's a long stretch. No, 40, that was 45 games. That's a long stretch of games. That's more than half a season. And the Knicks net rating was 2.7, which is good enough for ninth best. That means they were, you know, technically... One of the nine best teams in the NBA. Eh, everyone can say, eh, they can scoff. Oh, but we played a lot of depleted teams. Uh, that they were missing their best players. Uh, and we had uh, an easier schedule in the beginning part of the season. And you're right. All that stuff is a concern. But when it came down to tonight, I saw a team that didn't want to lose. That's what I saw. And I saw a leader, this guy who did not want this team to lose. And let me tell you, that is fantastic. That is something that you can replicate from one night to the next. Desire, heart, ambition, togetherness. That is something you can replicate. Will he make eight three-pointers <laughs> next night? Probably not. But we've seen him catch fire, you know, especially it, when, it, when he makes his first three-point shot, when, it, when his first shot is a three-point shot attempt and he makes it, I, I, I get this feeling. I was like, wow, he's going to have a big game. And he see, I haven't, you know, I don't have that uh, worked out, but uh, I, it, that's the feeling I'm getting from him. And uh, I think he was even asked in the post game about it. Uh, and he was even surprised. He was like, oh, I, don't know, I just, you know, I just take the shot that I'm that's open. Uh, but either way. Uh, shot, big shout out to Julius Randle tonight. And, uh, and speaking of, uh, Fournier, you know, he had the, the little beef with him and Fournier in, in the previous game. It wasn't anything major. I just want to, don't make it like, I don't want to make it seem like it was a big thing, but a shout out to him. Became a dad, t uh, today or yesterday or something, uh, recently. That's why he missed the game. And so shout out to him. Congratulations, uh, uh, Evan. And, uh, Emmanuel quickly came back from, uh, some sore knee. Uh, in, you know, the, he sat out the, the last game because of that, uh, which we definitely could have used him against the Raptors. Uh, but he came back tonight, and man, was that guy a game changer. Uh, let's get into it. Someone else, something else happened. This guy, Obi Toppin. Now, in the last game, in the last game, we all know what happened. You know, he was a beast in the first half, in the first seven minutes that he played. Uh, hit four three-pointers, uh... And uh, I think four three-pointers in a row. And he basically was completely instrumental in getting the Knicks back into that game against the Raptors. The Knicks were down 17 points. He comes into the game, totally turns the tide, cuts the deficit down under 10. And when he gets subbed out for Randall, the Knicks continue onward. And they even end up taking the lead in that game. I believe it was late in the third quarter. Uh, sorry if I'm doing a double recap right now, but everything's connected. But Obi only played three minutes in the second half, which is it's uh, inexcusable, honestly. And Thibs has to figure out a way to get those two guys on the court, especially when Obi is hitting his shots. 
I mean, they, they now you'll have, I just described Randall as one of the most potent offensive uh, uh, forces in the NBA when he's hitting his three-point shot and he's driving with the ferocity that we've seen him of late and finishing and passing when he's getting the double team and triple team. Yes, were there turnovers? Yes, he made, I think, five turnovers tonight or whatever, which is got to cut that down. But the effort was there. The intention to make the right play was there. I think these two guys can play together. They can definitely share time on the court. There's no doubt in my mind that Obi and Randall can share about that many minutes on the court on a given night, 10 minutes. Now, tonight, we didn't necessarily need it because Hartenstein played a very good game, even though you'll see his stat line wasn't that exciting, but he, he, he played a much. This is probably the best game Isaiah Hartenstein, Hartenstein has played as a Nick. I think that's what it felt like it even if it wasn't his best individual one it was the best performance that led to a victory and summed it up by he got the key block at the end of the game to seal the victory he got the block on Donovan Mitchell beautiful went perfectly vertical Donovan slammed into him and uh Isaiah didn't didn't bend the arms didn't do any anything dumb he played it smart, vertical, cut, uh, shut uh, Donovan Mitchell down on his drive, and the Knicks held on for the win. Outstanding. But Obi Toppin, another big game for him. Three boards, four of six. In just 10 minutes, he gave you 11 points. That is too potent, too potent, another potent offensive force to let sit on the bench for, for only 10 minutes in a game. So that means he, there was 38 other minutes he could have played. Could have, well, you know. But this is one thing I wanted to show you guys. I put this together for you guys. Now, interesting, during the four-game losing streak, the Knicks, the first three games, the Knicks bench were severely outscored. Since Mitch has been gone, uh, because now, you know, Isaiah or Sims has to rotate up into the first unit. And on top of that, you know, uh, we are... You know, we're compromised. Uh, the rotation is limited. Uh, the bench has been hurting. Obi has, well, in the past, the, you know, the recent game, Obi was great. But, you know, Obi was kind of coming around slowly uh, after the injury. Uh, so the bench had very little scoring punch. And the first three games in that losing streak, they were outscored. They did manage to outscore the Raptors in the last game, which was interesting. And we still lost. That means that the starters lost that game. But look at tonight. Look at tonight. The Cavs starters scored 91 points and the Knicks starters only scored 78. But the bench of the Knicks came through like monsters. 27 points over the Cavs 12 for a plus 15. And Manuel quickly, his plus minus tonight was a plus 14. And it's not like he... You know, let, let them up. It's not like he uh, provided 20 points of that 27. No, I think he only scored nine points. But that's um, this is this this guy, Emmanuel quickly. He's a find. We cannot just let him go for no for just whatever, you know, some a lateral move. He's either part of a big, huge trade that brings us the big superstar. Or he's here. He is here and he's here to stay. I'd like to see him here. I'd like to see him here to stay, along with Obi as well. We have something. We just need a coach that is a little more creative in how he utilizes these two guys specifically. Now they've th you know they've somewhat thrived under him, but I would say I'm going to give them more of the credit. I think they it's their own character. That's why they have, have begun to, to show signs of being the kind of player that we hoped they would be, especially me with Quickly. I'm a big, big fan of his. So let's go to the box score here. You can see Randall shot 8 of, thir eight of 12 from the three-point line. 8 of 12, outstanding. 67% he hit from there. Uh, he hit 50, uh, over 50% of his shots in general. Uh, 13 boards, 4 assists for 36 big buckets. Uh, Sam started today, uh, hitting his one bucket, uh, he got four rebounds. Uh, you know, he's a, he's still a work in progress. You know, he didn't play that much last year, which was his rookie year. 
Uh, he's the 58th pick. Uh, he's gonna take him some time. He's gonna he's gonna make mistakes. He's gonna find himself out of position. He's gonna bite on some fakes that he shouldn't. That's just gonna happen, and he will learn. The more minutes he's out there, he'll get better at it. It just feels that way with him. Brunson, not a good game for him. Not a good game for him. He was five of thirteen overall, one of three from the three point line. Though the three pointer he hit was a nice uh, big three pointer, but look, only four assists for him. And the ball was in his hands. The majority of the time that Brunson's on the court, the ball is in his hands. Only four dimes. Doesn't that's because and also in the fourth quarter, when he came back in and the Knicks had a, had that little lead, the the offense, the tonality, the shape of the offense changed. It became ISO. Everyone loading on one side, letting trying to let Randall or not necessarily, but it was more more Brunson try to do his thing, and it wasn't his night to do his thing. Uh, those are the times when Thibs has to pivot. Uh, hopefully, he hopefully he'll learn from it. I mean, he in the, in the post game he seemed very very happy. He was super. He was glowing. He was jovial. He was, always, he was like chatty, you know, making jokes and stuff. So he really enjoyed this win. But I hope when uh, he's he's watching the tape again for whatever the 49th time that he does uh, in between games that he'll see. That, uh, you know, it's pretty easy to tell when Brunson is not, it doesn't have it. And at that time, those are the times where you have to take that burden off of him. Because he, at the end of the day, he is only 6'1". And I know Garland's uh, tiny as well, but Garland is like 10 times faster than him. Uh, in fact, Garland kept burning him, kept burning him left and right, left and right. And it's when Garland was out of the game that the Knicks were able to make a run. The se- a couple of runs. This was a game of several runs. When he was out of the game, that's when uh, the Knicks were able to make runs because they, they weren't getting beat off the dribble from the penetration and then forcing the defense to collapse and rotate over. The defense held its structure when Brunson wasn't in the game and Garland wasn't in the game. So those are things important to to note. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, there was an interesting uh, dynamic because uh, we know how good of a defender, uh, especially out on the perimeter, IQ is. But I think Donovan uh, has a read on IQ, and he wanted to get a switch off of Grimes because Grimes was giving him a hard time. And uh, he kept trying to get a switch. He did, and a couple, I think two or three times, he was able to hit big three point buckets over uh, Emmanuel Quickly's head. So those are something that, that Quickly is going to have to look at and try to uh, adjust himself. Uh, it's a game of adjustments. Life, life, life is a series of adjustments. That's just the way it is. So these guys got to look at it that way. Uh, Quinton Grimes, uh, four of nine, two of seven. He was missing some open three pointers that he should have made. And this game probably wouldn't have been as close as it was if he had hit his shots. But uh, his defense on Donovan Mitchell was was pretty outstanding uh, for long stretches. Got to say he was frustrating him. And uh, Donovan was looking constantly seeking to get switches to get off of Grimes. So there, that's that's always a good sign. I want you guys to look at the minutes here. Randall did play 38 minutes. It's a lot. It's a little long. A little too many minutes, again, in my opinion. Uh, but look at Brunson. 36 minutes. Grimes, 36 minutes. RJ, 33 minutes. Look at the bench here. We got uh, uh, Quickly with 27 minutes. Uh, everybody was in double-digit minutes tonight. This was a true nine-man rotation. But... How can the guy who's giving you more than one point per minute play the fewest minutes? That's the stuff. That's the stuff. If we want to turn this into, uh, turn this, you know, this win that we just got tonight into a sustained run, uh, Obi's got to be a part of this thing. Look at that. Four of six, two of three, three rebounds. Beautiful. Uh, Isaiah Hartenstein, he had only four points, uh, but those nine boards, and he had four dimes himself. So a little bit of playmaking. We finally got to see some of that from Isaiah. So really, I mean, this was a great game for you, a great game as a Nick. Very happy. I want to see this, see more of this. There's no reason you can't replicate what you did tonight. You know, you went up against the second best defense, or even maybe the top defensive team in the NBA. You battled those guys on the boards. Uh, for position, uh, and you did a very good job tonight. Got to keep seeing that. Uh, Deuce, 12 minutes. Uh, 
Throw only three points, uh, three dimes there. Man, I would really like... It. But his defense, once again, his point of attack defense is very disruptive, as we always say. But I think, even though... Even though, obviously, Randall was the man tonight. And we don't even have a chance to win this game uh, without Randall's uh, heroics in the first quarter and in uh, late in the fourth quarter. Uh, but Emmanuel quickly... I think is the reason we were able to 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 win this game. Uh, his 27 points. Uh, remember, he just first came back from a sore knee that he had to rest. Uh, hit uh, only th took two three point attempts. Uh, he made one of them. Got five boards, six assists, nine points, four of eight, shot 50 percent from the field and from the free th from the three point line. Outstanding game for him and his defense. Once again, can can can't sing enough praises for for that. Uh, I did think I did like the way uh, McBride and uh, Rubio had a little battle there. Uh, Deuce uh, kind of cooked him a little bit a couple of times. He didn't make his other one his one attempt where he did burn. He did get past Rubio. He didn't make it, but the different time he did, which uh, I was really happy to see that. Look at the Knicks as a team overall. They almost shot fifty percent as an entire team, forty nine point three percent, but from the three point line, fifty one point five percent. And uh, even though, I mean, mostly it was Randall, you know, Randall uh, gave us uh, almost half of those uh, uh, makes, uh, 8 of 12. But look at Barrett, 3 of 5. Three of five. RJ, RJ had a weird game uh, coming off his previous game against Toronto. We scored 30 points and he was fantastic in that game offensively. Even though he did make two very ill-timed turnovers in that fourth quarter. And that kind of stuff has got to stop. If you want to be, if you want to stay as a ninth, one of the ninth best, ninth best teams in the NBA, then you can't be giving games away in that fourth quarter. Turnovers is why the Knicks lost to Toronto the last game. It was clear as day. Turnovers throughout the whole game and ill-timed turnovers, especially in the fourth quarter. And RJ was a big culprit of that. Just to give you guys a little understanding. So... For the first three months, the first 45 games of the season, uh, the Knicks' assist percentage was the worst in the NBA. 54.6, 30th. Ironically, during the the, <laughs> the three-game uh, losing streak, uh, and I'm counting up because of that was Mitch's last game. Mitch did play like in nine minutes or, or no, not even like a minute or two in that first game uh, three games ago. Now it's four games ago. Uh, but when he hurt his foot, his finger, and now he's gone. Uh, so I didn't want to count anything uh, before. I, well, I wanted to group all the games that he played before that, and then compare since. Uh, defensive rating: we went from 11th in the NBA to last in the NBA. Yeah, in the in the stretch that Mitch has been gone. We allowed 100 for per every 100 possessions. We allowed 133.3 points. 133.3 points. Now our offense was clicking. We were scoring 121.7 points per game per 100 possessions. That's seventh best. So the offense got better, but the defense got considerably worse, and then the net rating just tanked. We're now a mi from we went from a, a, a plus two point seven to a minus twelve point three, which is twenty seventh in the NBA, almost the third the third worst, and it came down to rebounds, rebounds. Knicks were the number two team in offensive rebounding in the entire NBA, averaging thirty three. Now in the three games since when uh, Mitch got hurt. The offensive rebound kind of held up, 33.3. It actually ticked up slightly, slightly, uh, for seventh best. So we, but we did dip. We went from second best to seventh best. But the defensive rebounding percentage, we're talking about the rebounding percentages. These are uh, uh, rebounding percentages. The defensive rebounding percentage, we went from a 71 percent, which is seventh was 17th best defensively, right? But overall, our rebounding percentage was third best in the NBA. Okay. <laughs> that dropped to 58.2, which is the, the defensive rebounding percentage, which is 30th. 
So our, our offensive rebounding just went, and then overall, our def our rebounding overall. So that's com to combine all those numbers together. We went from third best in the NBA to 27th, 27th. And that's why we're losing. We're scoring points, but we're giving them up on second chance points. That was the killer. Second chance points uh, was a crusher for us because look, the, uh, the offensive rebounding was still there, which I thought was gonna really take a hit with Mitch being out, but somehow we've managed to stay the course there. But defensive rebounding, just cratered and that is reason we hit that skid tonight tonight the Knicks out rebounded the Cleveland Cavaliers so that'll show you that when you put effort and you you understand spacing on the floor here's another thing I noticed too uh been watching some a lot of the other teams and one of the reasons like the Warriors they take a lot of threes right but they get a lot of rebounds, a lot of offensive rebounds. And the reason, the way they do it is, and it is often the guards that do it. And uh, even Clyde calls that out. He says, oh, we need the guards to you know, get those long rebounds. But it's where they're positioned on the court when the shot goes up in the air. They don't crash the boards. They crash the mid-range area. So the area inside, just inside the free throw line or the, but the top of the free throw, uh, 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 the key, that area, they they come in. At least one or two guys, the guy on the off ball side comes in. And that's how they get those long rebounds. We don't. Our guys either crash the boards so the balls go behind them or the other guys are, are fading back to protect the paint. So we have to change that philosophy if we're going to keep putting up launching threes which we have to. That's the only way you win in the NBA. Even though tonight we only put up 33. Uh, we connected on 51.5. Love that. Really proud of this team tonight. Uh, the plus minus is a very interesting. As I showed you the other stat about how the starters got burned. Or not burned. The starters got outscored by the Cavs starters. Well, here it is. Randall with his 36 points. While he was on the court, the team, the team was a minus 10. Sims, minus 9. Brunson, minus 11. Barrett, who did not necessarily have a good game, was an even because he played with the second unit. And Grimes was a minus 10 as well with his 10 points. But RJ played a lot with the second unit. And look at that second unit. Toppin, a plus 12. Hartenstein, a plus 11. McBride, a plus 13. And leading the way, as I pointed out earlier, was quickly with a plus 14. Beautiful. Big game from the bench because they move the ball. They move the ball. And look at the assists. Look at the assists of the bench. 13 assists for the bench. So that means the starters only got 12. That'll show you. If you move the ball, your offense is going to be better. Just facts right there. Move on to Cleveland. I'm losing some steam here. <laughs> uh, the Cavaliers, look, they had three guys, 20 points or more, and they could not pull this game out. Look at look at that. Kevin Love, nothing. Goose egg tonight for him. Uh, Wade, another goose egg. Stevens, nothing. Osman, no buckets. And we know these th those reserves have burned us in the past. Nothing. Even Ricky Rubio, who had the game of his life last year before he got injured, only got three points, uh, a long three-pointer. And uh, Karis Levert, who uh, even though he had an efficient scoring line, he didn't really make much of an impact on this game. <coughs> All right, let's keep moving. Uh, as you can see here, the team stats, uh, the Cavaliers, uh, they put up 87 attempts, at, at 12 more attempts than we did, but we connected beautifully. Uh, let's see the next pick. So, yeah, the free throws, again, we, hit, we only hit two out of three free throws that's got to change we've got it we got to start connecting on our free throws now they got to get in there and, and just practice and uh, focus on this thing i don't know if there's enough time in the day for them and their, and their off days or whatever because you know the three pointers are very important for them to keep uh, practicing those but still free throws are key especially late in games and tight games 
So the rebounding, look, the Knicks won it, 42-41. to 41. Uh, even the offensive rebounding, we were only a minus one against those giants that they have. Uh, they have some big, you know, they have a big front line. Uh, defensive rebounding, we won that battle today. Remember, we were last, last in the NBA during that losing streak. Tonight, we won that battle. Really key. Uh, the assists, they did out uh, do us an assist, uh, but we had a, a decent 25 is a decent amount. I still would like to see up that even uh, higher, but it's a decent amount. We committed a lot of turnovers tonight, 17 turnovers, uh, but we only gave up 16 points off of those turnovers. The Cavs committed only 12 turnovers, but they gave up 19 points off of it. So we had a, we ended up with a plus three. Even though we were a minus five in actual turnovers, we ended up being a plus three in points off of that. Fast break points, we were burned 17 uh, to seven, and even in points in the paint. So the New York Knicks won this game on the three-point line tonight. Yes, love it. There it is, 105-103, New York Knicks win. And I believe, uh, let me see, man, those damn turnovers to close uh, the second quarter were a killer. Uh, IQ's confidence lately uh, makes New York a different team, a very potent team. Uh, just looking at my notes, some of these notes here I may have missed. RJ did miss an alley oop to iHeart in the fourth quarter at the 9:56 mark, and iHeart was just like besides himself. Got you can't you can't let that happen, especially in a tight game like that. You have got to make the right play. That's what the right play is all about. And there it was, and you didn't you weren't able to come through. Uh, the Cavs did score nine straight points to cut the deficit to uh, just two. The Knicks were up 93-91 at that point, but the Knicks held on. Very proud of these guys. Very proud that they were able to hold on like that. All right. Well, that's it. I was wondering if there's anything else I overlooked. Uh, I had a lot of comments about the, the Raptors game, but it's almost like it's gone. It's passed. It's not really worth talking about it. Uh, you know, Mo Bamba. There's some talk about Mo Bamba uh, being made available by the, the Magic uh, I'd love to see that guy on this team. Uh, so if that's something that's uh, real, if the Mavs, uh, not the Mavs, the, if the Magic are really uh, looking at uh, moving him, I think we got to get in on that. Absolutely, 100%, 100%. Okay. All right, managed to get through this. <laughs> Thank you guys for bearing with me. Very much appreciate that. Uh, also, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit the thumbs up button for me. And uh, I will see you around the next bar.